रुक ड्रीम टू सोर टू बी अ ड्रीम Where did you run off to? <sighs> Isn't it a bit early to be having coffee? Yeah, well, eight in the morning is early when you spend the night getting into the kind of trouble you were getting into. Wait. What's all this? I, I It's a little late for Christmas, isn't it? Not Christmas. Oh. Oh, I know this handwriting. I apologize for breaking the rules, sir, but as you are clearly so fond of breaking them yourself, I know you'll find it in your heart to forgive me. Your fondness for our mutual friend in legal created an opportunity I simply couldn't let slip by. Too many years have passed, and while these gifts from myself and your mother can't make up for lost time, We hope at the very least you'll have a lovely day. Happy birthday, kiddo. Trish. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> I've really let myself slip, haven't I? No, no. Don't apologize. I'm usually the one doing the grand gestures. I assume that this means Trish stopped by while I was asleep. Hmm. Was anyone with her? Just wondering if my mother was with her or if they might have visited anyone else. No. Well, that's good. It's nothing like that, nothing dramatic. I I can't imagine a more embarrassing way to meet someone's parents than wearing their son's clothes at the crack of dawn. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Well, maybe. It's kind of hilarious. Uh, yeah, I'm a Christmas baby, I guess. <laughs> How does that explain a lot? What do you mean by that? What? Wait, <laughs> why are you giggling? <laughs> Planning behind my back and making fun of me? You think you know someone, then they pull a stunt like this. Ah, well, I didn't bring it up because I don't really celebrate it. And we're a bit late now, so I certainly wasn't going to throw in a... By the way, I'm a year older. While we were off on our escapade last night... That doesn't exactly get the juices flowing. Oh, no. Oh, uh, okay, I am not an older man. Please. You know all about my youthful vigor at this point. Don't insult me. I think I proved enough of a point last night, didn't I? Ah. <sighs> yeah, 
I imagine Trish would leave the storytelling up to me. Probably told you I like the sound of my own voice. <laughs> Another gift, huh? Wow. Wow. I'm going to have her make so many phone calls when we get back to work. Ah. Uh, okay, right. So this is all a lot. So I'll just tell you about the situation. Trish has been a part of the family for a long time. When my mother and I moved into the family home when she remarried, we were to get a nanny of sorts. My mother and Trish have been friends since, well, since before I was born, and my mother's path in life went a certain way, but she never left Trish behind, even when it may have been better if she did. Well, I... I wouldn't have willfully brought anyone else under that man's roof if I could avoid it, but I'm sure Trish being there was good for my mother. She looked after me as well as Faust, keeping her close as I succeeded the family business was probably just my way of trying to hold on to something. Hmm. There are a great deal of things that I haven't held on to, one of which is my birthday and Christmas. Ah. <sighs> I wish it was just the standard bitterness that comes along with sharing your day with another holiday that involves gifts. But going to such lengths would be petty, even for me. No, there are some other reasons. I've always had a bit of a savior complex, so my birthday being on Christmas, <laughs> it's ironic. Were you scared that I would view this as some sort of betrayal of trust? That I would be angry or upset? And you did it anyway. <sighs> You're bold. A bit defiant. A little reckless. Assuredly bad for me. Or at least the me that I've tried to prop up over the years. I don't know if letting you get a peek behind the curtain was a wise move, or if it'll be my undoing, or... <sighs> you could be anyone. You could have used me. You could have taken advantage of my carelessness. You could have opened that door for anyone while I was fast asleep, dreaming of your touch. And I should be scared. Scared that I'm getting sloppy. That I'm... Losing my edge. That I'm losing... Control. And maybe I am. But for now, I'm just... Thankful that you cared enough to take the chance even though you were scared. <laughs> of course you want to know about the cereal box. It was my favorite, once upon a time. 
Mom didn't always have a lot of time to cook for me. That was Trisha's thing. But if I caught her at breakfast, she'd at least make me a bowl and sit with me. Before she had to get going, at least. <sighs> Work? Yeah. Something like that. She's, uh... She's a busy woman. But she knows how to pull at your heartstrings. And remembers everything. That's why she'd get me this damn cereal. I'm a hard guy to shop for, I guess. But she's got it figured out. Oh. You've known about this long enough to shop for me. I can tell because the face you pulled when I said I was hard to shop for really told a story. It's not a tie, is it? Or a watch? <laughs> I know, I know. I'm going to be happy no matter what it is. This gesture from you is already... quite special. Uh. Oh. This is a very expensive pen, Rook. Huh. For writing new chapters. Huh. I see. So you really could love a man like me, couldn't you? <sighs> Thank you for this, for last night, for everything. I, um, I'm honest with myself, or I try to be, when it comes to my flaws, most of which are brought on by my need to feel as though I am helping in some way taking on some sort of burden when no one asked me to. It is embarrassing the way that I... the way that I act as though I don't want the approval of the people in my life, as though I don't want them in it. And then there was you. And I find myself vulnerable. And it's pleasant. It, it's, it's new and exciting and fun and yes, I feel Scared as well. Scared that... <sighs> You'll keep turning over these stones and you're going to see what's underneath. You're going to see... The disgusting... The unruly... The... Self-serving and selfish and... Everything that would keep someone like you away from someone like me. You haven't asked that many questions about my business. Who I've hurt and why. What exactly the nature of my work is. 
And I don't know if it's because you're naive or if because you're foolish and smitten with someone like me. But I can't stop myself from wanting you. I knew it. The moment I laid eyes on you, I knew that there was something, some reason that I needed more of you. And I don't mean that to sound... I mean, it is... Hopelessly horny. I, I know. I know. I know. But it was more than that. Not to sound like a madman. I felt a sense of I felt a sense of safety of <sighs> it was like any room you were in felt as though it became sacred ground and I don't know what to do with that other than want you And I'm not used to that. I'm not used to this recklessness. <sighs> no, I, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that we've moved too fast or that we we need to change anything. Quite the opposite. I have been miserable for a very long time. And whatever the reason may be, I could feel nothing of the sort when your eyes are laid upon me. So stay. Stay and celebrate this day with me. We don't have to do anything. We can just eat this horrible cereal and be together. I would like that very much. <laughs> All right, then. This is our day. What should we make of it? Mm. 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 Oh. I... Thank you.